The sounds of common people suffering can be heard echoing here in this half underground space, which is said to be the remains of a prison. People who couldn't pay their taxes either had to run away or be thrown into this dungeon. A list of people who had tried to escape has been excavated here. When the Tang Dynasty collapsed at the beginning of the 10th century, several tribes fought over this region. Then, after about 50 years, the Uyghurs finally established an empire here. On the 24th of August, snow fell for the first time on the Tianqian Mountains. Time passes and the people change. But water from the melting of the snow on the Tianshan Mountains is always essential to the survival of the oasis folk. This canal took 15 years to build. In August, it's time to pick the grapes. Turfan is the principal grape growing area of the Western lands. You can see many racial types among the women who pick the grapes. The grapes are dried by old men inside brick-built huts and that look as though they're made of mosaic. The grapes first came here from their original home in Egypt and Persia, and they were already being grown in the time of Gao Chang. Even during the Tang Dynasty, wine and grapes from Turfan graced the tables of Chang'an, the Chinese capital. Today, the yearly production of grapes is more than 28,000 tons, and half of them are exported as raisins. Here, they'll dry for a month. You can often see people building a new house in one of the small alleys. During the summer season, the entire family, including children, help to build themselves a new home. Why 
Every house in Turfan has a half basement where the temperature is several degrees cooler than outside. The ceiling is made of vines closed with a little earth. The half basement is used to keep food fresh and for the family to cool down. This traditional way of building a house is very convenient for an almost rainless place like this. <laughs> At two o'clock in the afternoon, everybody takes a siesta, and the whole oasis is silent for a little while. But even in the middle of the day, we saw a few people on the dunes in the desert. Inside tiny tents, old people sit with their feet buried in the hot sand. The temperature of the sand is more than 80 degrees Celsius, or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and they call it the hot sand treatment. They say it's very effective as a cure for rheumatism or arthritis. The Uyghurs consider the sand as a friend and these old men will sit with their feet in the sand until dusk. Halfway up a cliff of the Fire Mountains are the Beziklik Thousand Buddha Caves, which are still half hidden. These caves flourished during the Tang Dynasty and later to the period of the Uyghur Empire. In the Uyghur language, Beziklik means a place that is beautifully decorated. But this has been a place of destruction twice in history. The first destruction was by Muslims when they invaded the western lands at the beginning of the 11th century. And the second was by foreign explorers from many different countries at the beginning of the 20th century. On both occasions, the thousand Buddha caves were despoiled. The Uyghurs who came here from the Mongolian steppes in the 10th century were Buddhists at first. In Beseklik, we found pictures of them worshipping Buddhist images. But after the invasion of the Muslim Karakhans, they were converted to Islam. The Islamic religion totally rejects all images. Worse, a superstition arose that people would be cursed if they were looked at by a heathen image. They believed that to avoid the curse, you had to destroy the eyes of the image. So most of the Buddhist images in Bezeklik were defaced.
Many of the paintings that escaped the Muslims fell victim to explorers in the early 20th century who took many of them away. They left marks on the walls that looked like peeled skins.